Have you ever asked a young person the things that they're passionate about? Have you ever taken the time to discover their feelings and opinions about specific things? I know we've all experienced this once throughout our youth. Whenever you would ask your mom or your dad or your grandparents, you'd ask them something and all they would say was, you're too young to understand or just wait till you get older. Quite often, kids are assumed to be inexperienced of their surroundings and therefore they instead must grow into adulthood to achieve enlightenment. However, I believe young people carry the potential to be great leaders and create change. Therefore, we must strive to promote young people's success by educating and inspiring, especially in regions around the world where young people lack the resources to do so themselves. So one of my experiences with recognizing the potential in the youth occurred when I was 14. Uh, my amazing mentor and family friend introduced me to Hope, Hope for Senegal, a campaign designed to create various projects that help people throughout Senegal. So once I discovered this, I thought to myself, what better place to do a project in than in Senegal, my parents' home, uh, homeland? And because my Senegalese background is extremely important to me. So you know, after discovering this, I was Skyping my aunt, who is a history teacher at Lycée Galen du Juif, a public high school in Dakar, Senegal. I told her uh, the intentions that I had to create a project, but I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to do. So she suggested for me to create a project involving education, for she knew the actualities of schooling in a developing nation. So in February 2012, I began fundraising. And with the hard work and support of my family and friends, I was able to surpass my nominal goal of $400 and raise $900. So, oh, yes. <laughs> So then that following summer, my family and I, we went to Dakar to personally deliver the, the supplies to the students at Lisa Galindu Juth. And when I went there, they, they greeted me with the famous Senegalese taranga of hospitality, kindness, and acceptance. And the students, they greeted me with such gratitude as I handed them the blue bags filled with the, the tools to reach their potential. So, like during the, so you know, when I was there with my family and we were meeting the students during the event, I took the time to uh, talk to the students about our goals and what we aspire to be in the future. And a lot of them had such ambitious goals, such as aspiring to be doctors and you know, working mechatronics and engineers and researchers, all these great things to create change in their homeland and improve lives. Sadly, however, these ambitions are often left as dreams. In Senegal, the population from zero to 24 years, 24 years is about 62%. And school life expectancy from primary, which is like kindergarten, all the way up to tertiary education, which is um, university, is only eight years. The United States is about double that. And these numbers are crazy imbalanced. As we often see in developing and underdeveloped nations, citizens have lived in poverty for generations. Therefore, they just seem to settle in their unfortunate circumstances. In other words, these young boys and girls lack the resources, the self-confidence to believe in themselves and to beat the odds in order to create something great. And in countries like Senegal, where the population, where half of the population is literally, half, the, half of the population is youth, it is so vital to motivate these young people to believe in themselves and see the potential that truly is within them because like those kids, they are amazing. And I felt I was able to do this even if it only was with just 15 young men and women. And so now, so I feel, I also feel as a second generation immigrant, I have the duty to change the preconceived notions of Africa established by um, the media and ignorance. <laughs> For example, once people discover my Senegalese background, I'm instantly flooded with these questions like, do you guys live in huts? Or are there buildings over there? And then they'll, and then, <laughs> and then they'll ask, wait, so like, do you guys all click? Is that like the official language? I'm just like, what? <laughs> and it's, when I was young, these questions used to really unsettle me because they were so, they just highlighted the negative, depressed, and hopelessness images of Africa. And now that I'm older, I see this as an opportunity to, better, to give better understanding and knowledge to the Africa that I know and love. I help others to see the greatness that is within these African, within these boys 
and girls that I was able to meet. Because indeed, the poverty in Africa is evident and depressing. However, these young people cannot constantly be reminded of these unfortunate sorrows placed upon them, or else they're just gonna fall deeper into a hole of endless disparity. So now I call on to the older generations. For you guys to be the positive role models we, the younger generations, look up to. Your experiences, along with your support, give us the opportunity to learn and grow. For example, my father immigrated from Senegal in 1996 without speaking a word of English. He made the sacrifice of leaving every, of the life he knew in Senegal in order to give me, my mom, and my sisters the chance to establish something great with what is offered here. You know, it was very difficult when he first came, adjusting and everything, so much that he truly considered going back and just leaving behind everything that he had worked hard for. But his courage and his determination led him to staying and eventually obtaining his bachelor's in network management today. And so my father's experiences has taught me to work hard to reach our goals and to value education, because it truly is an important thing to have. Likewise, my father's generation was influenced by Leopold Senghor, a co-founder of the Negritude Movement. He motivated Africans to accept their shared black identity and to reclaim the African heritage that was taken away from them by European imperialists. And that ultimately, that ultimately led him to becoming the first Senegalese president of Senegal in 1960. But today, we see a new wave of leaders that inspire the youth to uncap their greatness. You know, young, soft, young soccer enthusiasts around the world look up to players such as Messi and Drogba, Solo, Dempsey, uh, Demba, and all these other players. They look up to them with such admiration for their talent and the prestige they bring to their homeland. Young people also look up to musicians and artists around the world. To illustrate, Senegal happens to be a melting pot of all genres of music. Once you step foot into a street in Dakar, you can instantly hear the beat of the tamba and walk down that same street just to, to hear these unique mixes of hip hop and R&B and pop and Afrobeat and balakh, all these unique sounds being created by these amazing, talented young artists. You know, young Senegalese artists, they aspire to be as great as Le Roi de Mbalach, the king of Balakh Yusindur, or a successful producer such as Akon, and all these other artists that inspire us through their music. So my experiences in Senegal influenced and inspired me to shine light on the darknesses that restrict the youth around the world. You know, I've been so fortunate to travel to places in Africa and Europe and the United States and even here in Texas. And what I've noticed is that there's so much beauty and potential and passion in the youth. And they just, you know, a lot of, and a lot of them, they don't see it. And they just need help seeing that it, the greatness that is within them. And as the French dramatist Pierre Cornel once said, la valeur n'attend point le nom des années. Valor does not await the passing of the years. And we saw this just last week with the youngest person ever to receive a Nobel Prize. 17-year-old Malala Yousafzai. Yes. <laughs> Malala's eminence has impacted the entire international community. She's only eight days older than me. Like, that's so amazing. You know, just imagine if she was told to wait till she was older to fight for education and women's rights in her community in Pakistan. Just imagine if she was told she was too young to identify a situation and venture out to face the challenges that were ahead of her. So therefore, we cannot be so quick to shut down the ideals and motifs of the youth. And by doing so, we must you know, give advice and support in order for them to see the greatness and the accomplishments that they can achieve in the future. Now, they say knowledge is power. But I'm going to modify that and say knowledge is power. However, applied knowledge is advancement. As I mentioned before, those young, those young students on the screen right there that aspire to be doctors. Just imagine if they have all the knowledge in the world of anatomy and biology, but they're never given that opportunity to go to universities such as UT and actually get that hands-on experience and to further their knowledge and create all these skills and put those skills into practices to create great things. You know, we can't let this happen. So we must strive for the youth to see the greatness that is within them. Let, the, let us show the youth the power of service of volunteerism has, not only on character, 
but on others as well, because that's something that I have and continue to see today. Because the outcomes of tomorrow result from the actions of today. Thank you. <laughs>